Hello everyone. My name is Mohammad Asif Rana, and I'm here to present our work geared towards benchmarking skill learning from demonstration. This work has been done at Georgia Tech. So before I go deeper into the, the topic, let me explain to you what skill learning from demonstration is. When I talk about skill learning from demonstration, I'm specifically learning, uh, talking about learning manipulation skills from human demonstrations. This is also called trajectory learning or even behavior cloning. The goal here to, is to learn a manipulation skill from multiple human demonstrations, which are trajectories or motions provided on a robot, and then generalize the skill to novel scenarios. Now, there are multiple challenges associated with application of skill learning from demonstration to end, end user criteria to our, our end users. First, the skill uh, which needs to be learned can vary a lot in terms of its task complexity. This requires flexibility or expressivity in terms of the skill model. Secondly, the human demonstrator, which is an end user, uh, can vary a lot in terms of the user experience. Uh, the experience level can be uh, can range from a naive user that maybe uh, that is providing demonstrations to all the way to an expert user. Lastly, since the goal is to generalize the skill to novel scenarios. The novel scenarios here can, can be exemplified by new positions of, of the robot from where we want to generate new uh, new motions. Uh, these, these new positions can be similar to the demonstrated initial positions of the robot, or it could be something very different from the demonstrated initial positions. Now, factoring in all these different challenges, we need a skill learning model to uh, to take care of all these all these challenges to be applicable to, a, to an end user scenario. There are plenty of approaches that have been proposed in the last few decades, which address some of these challenges. However, to our surprise, there does not exist a performance evaluation, evaluation which, which evaluates these existing approaches in terms of end user requirements that I just mentioned. So in this work, we seek to, to uh, carry out an overarching benchmarking study, evaluating the positives and negatives of various, uh, various skill learning from demonstration approaches uh, on these end user requirements. To carry out this benchmarking, we we carried out this following experimental design, and I'll go over each of the parts of this experimental design with you. First, we set tasks in our lab environment to simulate all the different types of task complexities that an uh, that a robot may uh, may encounter in the real world. First, on the top left of your screen, you see a reaching task. Which is which is a relatively simple task where the goal is to reach the center of this block with the end effector of the robot. On the bottom right of your screen, uh, on, uh, you see a writing task where the goal was to draw a letter S, which is a highly constrained shape-based motion. Uh, and here the here the goal is to draw the letter S from different initial positions of the robot. On the bottom uh, on the bottom left of your screen, you see a pressing task where the goal is to push down two pegs one at a time. Here, the, there's a, a constraint to, uh, in motion, which is, which is both in terms of position as well as direction of motion. On the, on the top right of the screen, you see a pushing task with the goal is to reach the, the lid of a box and push it closed, which imposes both a position and a direction of motion based constraint. Now, with all these different uh, tasks set up in the lab environment, imposing different levels of motion based constraints and hence having different levels of task complexities, we invited nine different demonstrators to the lab and provide demonstrations. Now, the demonstrators we uh, we selected were from different levels of experience. Again, simulating the end users that uh, these these approaches that uh, some of the existing approaches may encounter in the real world. Now, these demonstrators, uh, some of them were from low experience, who are having no experience with robotics at all all the way to, uh, to demonstrators who had previously experienced learning from demonstration and provided demonstrations to, a, to the robot. These nine demonstrators provided multiple demonstrations for each of these tasks. And overall, we, we collected 36 task datasets. Once we collected these datasets, the, the next stage was to select the algorithms that we want to evaluate in this benchmarking study. We select, overall, we selected four algorithms. The selection procedure for these algorithms was such that we, want, we wanted to select algorithms which belong to a, the broad spectrum of existing learning from demonstration approaches. For this, we observed that the existing skill learning approaches can be broadly categorized into two categories, namely time-dependent approaches and time-invariant approaches. Among the time-dependent approaches, 
we selected two algorithms. First, we had TPGMM, which is a time-dependent statistical approach, which given multiple demonstrations, as you can see from the example on the bottom left of your screen, TPGMM extracts the time-evolving statistical features of motions and then generates, uh, sets up a, a, a mean tracking controller, which, uh, which tracks the mean of, the, uh, of these demonstrations under uh, a variable stiff stiffness control. Second, we had a time-dependent dynamics-based approach, which is ProMPs, which views demonstrations as rollouts for a fixed, from a fixed horizon dynamical system. Next, we also had a time-invariant dynamical system, which views demonstrations as rollouts from a time-invariant dynamical system. This is, this, uh, in this category, we chose CLFDM. This, this approach also imposes stability constraints on the, on the learned dynamical system, such that all the demonstrations, all the reproductions, sorry, all the reproductions converge to this final goal position. Lastly, we also had a time invariant geometric approach, which uh, encodes demonstrations inside a, a generalized cylinder and thus extracts the geometric or shape-based features of motions. Once we had all these four algorithms implemented, we trained all of these four algorithms on these 36 tasks data sets that we collected from the, from the demonstrators, in the end getting 180 trained models. Now the next stage is to evaluate, which was the whole goal of this benchmarking study, to evaluate these 180 trained models. So what we did was to we queried these 180 trained models from new initial positions of the robot. Now some of these initial positions of the robot were similar to the demonstrated initial positions, but to really evaluate the generalization capabilities of these approaches, we also queried them from new initial positions that were that could uh, that were sometimes vastly different from the demonstrated initial positions. Furthermore, and importantly, instead of ourselves uh, evaluating these approaches in terms of existing quantitative metrics, we uh, we asked end users themselves, since since the goal of of this whole approach was to uh, evaluate these approaches in terms of end user criteria, we asked end users who were Amazon Mechanical Turk evaluators to look at the videos of these task reproductions or executions of the robot and rate these executions on a scale of zero to three. In the end, we collected 3,600 Amazon Mechanical Turk ratings and all our results are based on these 3,600 Amazon Mechanical Turk ratings. Since we had a lot of results, I don't really have the time to go over all, all of them, but here's a glimpse of some of the results. In this video, you see the reaching task reproductions on the robot. On the left of your screen, you see CLFDM and TLGC which did not perform uh, reliably well on, in, on this task as ProMP and TPGMM them did. Uh, it should be noted here that CLFDM and TLDC are both time invariant approaches. CLFDM, uh, uh, although imposes convergence to the goal, uh, however, does not restrict, uh, uh, does not add obstacle avoidance. Hence, we of often saw obstacle, uh, obstacle collision, which is the table in this case. For TLGC, it focuses a lot on the on the curvature of motions, but does not enforce uh, goal convergence. For the writing task, we saw the tables flip. We saw CLFDM and TLGC to perform really well, but ProMP and TPGMM, which are time-dependent approaches, to perform not as well and not draw the S shape as well. Uh, this is a particular property of time-invariant approaches, uh, because time uh, sorry time-dependent approaches, and because time-dependent approaches are known to not uh, are, are prone to temporal and, and spatial perturbations. So overall, we saw motion constraints dictated performance, but we also saw that when we started closer to the demonstrated initial positions, the, 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 uh, uh, the performance of existing approaches in terms of average ratings was fairly reliable. However, when, when the starting position uh, chain moved away from the demonstrated initial positions, we saw unreliability in the, in the performance. We also saw collisions and inefficient power. Uh, the human demonstrator experience level positively correlated with performance, which was, uh, which was, uh, which was already uh, expected. Uh, however, minimal robotics experience. Lastly, we also provide recommendations to guide future research. As I mentioned before, we have a lot of uh, results which I cannot go over in this short presentation, but please go to our paper and take a look at them. Uh, to guide future research, we are, we are open sourcing all the accompanying videos and data sets, and please go to this website to take a look. Thank you.